Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella, and as always, my co host, John Jacobs. Thank you so much for joining. And tonight, we got an exciting episode for y'all. Yes, we're going to talk about Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, this amazing cinematic universe of martial arts. Um, you know, it started with the first three movies following Danny Russo, or as we like to say, Daniel Sun. And then we got the Hillary Swank, the next Karate Kid movie. And then after that, Will Smith bought the rights, made the movie uh, with his son and Jackie Chan. It, we, we, some people liked it, some people did it. But then Will Smith did the smart thing and went to YouTube Red and got us Cobra Kai. Mm. And eventually, and I, trust me, one of those popular shows on YouTube Red. I don't know what was on there. Eventually, Netflix picked it up, and here we are today. We're talking Cobra Kai. Now, before we talk today with anybody, drop in the comment section. Are you Cobra Kai? Are you Miyagi Do? Who are you? Where are you? Let me know. So, Jesse, you start off. Are you Cobra Kai or are you Miyagi? I I have to say Miyagi Do. Miyagi Do all the really? way. Really? I, and it, only because I took, I actually was in a martial arts, and my martial arts was a lot more like Miyagi Do. But I will, I, I'll admit, there was a sprinkle at times, if, depending on who you meant. There was a couple of, is that a problem, Mister Lawrence? Type of karate <laughs> instructors. There were a few of those. So uh, I would have to say I'm Miyagi Do as well. Uh, obviously, the you took martial arts. I, I have not taken any martial arts, but I, I certainly understand a little little bit to the degree that I can. And obviously, martial martial arts is more about discipline. It's more about you know mentality and personal strength, responsibility, you know, uh, confidence, you know, those type of things, and. Mm -hmm. Cobra Kai, while it's enticing because they project strength and dominance and perseverance over that. So like more attack versus defensive. Uh, yeah. John Kreese is just a son of a bitch. And I never mm -hmm. liked him even from the beginning because, you know, when I was a little kid watching Karate Kid, um, cause I mean, look, I was born in 1981. I grew up watching karate kid Yeah, and the Even whole the cartoon time, show? <laughs> uh, I, I will say I didn't really dabble in the cartoon show. I didn't have any of the toys either. Although I did want them now they're worth like actual real collecting money. Um, Wait, someone get me a silver, Terry silver action figure. <laughs> so there, all there is, all a, I, want. I, I think there is an episode in the last season of Comic Book Men where Ralph Macchio showed up to the stash, and yes. they they ended up uh, going through. Uh, I think it was um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Tall Rob. I, I I forget what the guy's name was. Uh, yeah. They're, they're a big collector guy, and uh, he ended up getting it. So Ralph Macchio got the toy and everything. So that was really cool. I never had any of them, but I just got the feeling that Cobra Kai was just all about kicking people's asses and hey dude that's that's totally fine if that's what you want to do but don't bring karate in it you know don't tarnish what you know the sport and the discipline is about because you want to take the the shortcut or the or the powerful way if you will or you know obviously in cobra kai we get flashbacks to nam and and where he came from dude why are you throwing up terry silver already man come on we gotta wait for that we gotta wait for that i want this action figure, i know so. i do trust I, me i want it too man terry silver is my dude even though he's the worst son of a bitch but i, I, I mean i, I like really yeah Dude. I open up the pull string, so when you put it by a wall, he's like laughing in the corner while Danny Russo is breaking his hand on those boards. Yeah, like, yeah. But remember how? Okay, no, we can't get into this right now. Sorry, but, sorry, I had no, to you're do fine. it. So you know, Cobra Kai, while they're powerful and while they dominate and while they rule, it's it's not the way. You know what I mean? And look, I don't care who you are. Mr. Miyagi is the man. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, when you were born. All of that is irrelevant. Mr. Miyagi is the man, and you're not going to top him as a sensei. You're just not. It's it's just it's not going to happen. The man is still talked about to this day and revered as a fictional character. And yeah. Pat Morita has been dead for what, 10, 15, 20 years? I forget when he passed away, but it, it, yeah. I think it's been at least 10 years, if not and longer. And he was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. So, 
I mean, it's, you know, it's it's Miyagi do all the way. Uh, we could joke and say, oh, yeah, I'd be a Cobra Kai and I'd be all about it. Da, da. But look, man, like at the end of the day, it's all about Miyagi. And I really like how they evolved kind of that whole yeah. thing throughout the, the, the three original films. Um, the but thing- it, looks, it looks like we've got uh, Jordan Jenkins in the comments coming oh, out yeah. and he's a Cobra Kai. So uh, no surprise there since I've known Jordan pretty much my whole entire life. Well, I, I, here's the thing. Cobra Kai, the way it is now, the way John Johnny has been trying to do it, he's doing it properly. That's the way a martial arts should be. I mean, yes, that he has his dumb moments where he's like, send it to the internet and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> and he, he, he's like, oh, it's not kicking ass and rock and roll. But at the same time, he does have the heart. 200%, that, of course. 200%. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. He has he has that heart that I, that I absolutely love. And I think they did such a good job taking a character that was absolutely flat and not three-dimensional and, and fleshing him out as a character. And you feel for him. You really feel for this character. You see that he wants to have a redemption, but he has people like John Kreese stopping him. Which, by the way, fun fact, John Kreese, the part was originally offered to a specific famous martial artist. I'm not sure if anybody can answer that. If, and I will say, Chuck Norris. They offered Chuck Norris the crease role? Yes. There's no However, way Chuck Norris was going to ever accept that he, role. He man. never accepted it because no. he said he never wanted to paint martial arts exactly. in a bad image. Exactly. Yeah, but I just thought that was a kind of a cool little fact. But let's get, let's get, in, let's get into our discussions, our debate. So, so this is the spoiler alert stuff, guys. So if you haven't seen uh, Cobra Kai, get out from under the rock you live under and get to Netflix and start watching. Yeah, so, so last yeah, you've already kind of spoiled it right here before you even gave the spoiler warning. Oh, already. everybody saw this uh, coming. And, and, and you've done this out of sequence. I thought we were going to talk about Karate Kid films first and then lead up to Cobra Kai. All right, Kai. all right. We'll go no, back. No, no, no. We can, we can go backwards. We can Quentin Tarantino this episode. That's not we'll a problem. A little- a little on the front, a little bit yeah. on the back, and we'll do some random flashbacks. I think it but, makes, oh, I'm sorry. I, I think it makes sense to start at the beginning with this, right? Because yeah, if, you, if you jump into Cobra Kai, now the great thing about Cobra Kai is, is that you don't necessarily have to have seen Karate Kid. I mean, obviously, you won't have the nostalgic connection, but they no, really won't. sum it up in those first couple of episodes. You know that these dudes were rivals in high school. One of them kicked the other one's ass at a tournament and one stole his girl, and now it's like 35 years later, and they still have beef. I mean, and that's where we are, right? But let's go all the way back to the beginning where Daniel LaRusso shows up in Reseda, and you know he's he's with his mom. They're always on the move. Clearly, they're they're not a well off family, which is fine. Um, and I love the dynamic they have, and it really shows that it's a good it's a good life lesson that says, hey, you don't always need money. This mom and exactly. son are traveling, and they're just moving from job to job, city to city, and I think that's great. Uh, that car is a fucking life lesson. Oh, Every yeah, time that he started, car, he man. Run it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus. It reminded me. It reminded me of the station wagon from Superman Three that Annette O'Toole was always working on. But the uh, hardest, the yeah. hardest scene from the first Karate Kid movie is where he's talking to Allie to get a date, and then his mother's at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Wait, oh hi! And yeah, then they have to, mom. <laughs> and then they have to actually push the car and get it jump started. Like yeah. I was thinking, like if Allie's ovaries aren't drying up, she likes this kid. <laughs> so I was thinking, like, oh yeah. One thing as a young kid that that I really liked with this is this was a fish out of water story. Daniel was from Jersey. He literally moved from one coast to the other coast. Didn't know anybody, and you know he. He had a tough time adapting, which many kids do. And in this particular high school he went to, there was a group of kids that all went to the same karate dojo, and they were assholes. And (laughs) Daniel basically was like, fuck you guys. Uh, I'm going to do what I want. And, oh, by the way, I've been reading karate books, so I know what I'm doing. And he went to that bonfire. He tried to steal Johnny's girl and uh, really quickly learned that you can't learn all your martial arts reading from a book. And that's where we get the mentor to enter the picture. Uh, Mr. The maintenance Miyagi. man. 
the maintenance man. And <laughs> you would think nowadays, if that were to happen, like, would this movie even happen? You've got a young child in high school that befriends a elderly, like, almost retired aged maintenance man at his, like, low income apartment complex, and his mom immediately trusts him. Yes, yeah, go spend easily. all this time. It's like Mr. Wizard, man. Everybody loves Mr. Wizard, but if you stop and think about it what fucking parent is letting their like 12 year old go to mr wizard's house all day and do exactly. science experiments right here's like the, <laughs> here's the deal here's the deal in all the apartment complexes i lived in no offense not hanging out with the maintenance guy no, <laughs> not at all. i don't like, want anything to do with those guys <laughs> you got, you're just in this maintenance shop you're like why is there a bag of only right shoe heels i don't know <laughs> He would get like smoking a cigarette, like, "Hey, kid, you want to see something really impressive? Meet me in two A." Yeah, no thanks, man. I'm good. Yeah, it's like, it's like, but literally, like, but but here's the thing: the '80s. I always had this thing where '80s movies have the suspense, suspension of disbelief sure, immediately absolutely. because, yeah. like, like literally, you watch Beverly Hills Cop, Ghostbusters, all this stuff. They do so many things that cannot happen in the real world, but oh, you're like, fuck it, it's the 80s. I want to see well, how this rolls out. So, anyways, he he he's he's very much marked for death by these bullies. They're constantly yeah. bullied. I mean, they attempted to kill him. They threw him down a rocky hill on a bike. Yeah, right. Like this and movie should have ended. Alley's radio, man. Yeah, this movie should have ended differently if it took place today. It would have oh, ended very. <laughs> well, yeah, he would have gone to jail for attempted murder. That's what yeah. would have happened. <laughs> but, but basically, Miyagi says, hey, look, we're going to have a tournament. They lay off him, and then they handle it at the tournament, mano y mano, which, at which he eventually won. And uh, with what people say was an illegal kick, but that's – but here's the thing. Now, I, they this explain is, it in Cobra Kai. Daniel defends himself. He says, no, it wasn't illegal. It was a fair kick, but – I'm not 100% sold on that because he literally says no face and then he kicked him in the face. So I mean, I'm going to, I, as a professional martial art, I got paid to do this, a professional martial arts judge. I'm going to step in right now and put this to rest in my opinion, okay. my humble opinion. All okay. right. Of my 20 years of doing that. Um, basically I would have let it go. I would have let it go. Listen to this guy guys. He's willing to let it go. I would let it go. Cause here's the thing. All right. So the, you, the, in a martial arts fight and, and sparring, there, there's penalties. You call penalties, you call warnings, you call that stuff. But then there's these, there's, there's weird loop. Here's the thing. It's from the judge's perspective. So I would have let it go because I'm like, you know what? The kid, he ran into his foot. Like Johnny ran into his foot. I'm sorry. I mean, that's kind of a stretch, man. That's like saying, hey, I ran into this guy and oops, I got pregnant. Like, wait, you know what? how like, ineffective man. the crane kick is? The crane kick is the most un. Here's the problem with the crane kick, okay? Yeah, uh, you go. telegraph you all the way. Now. You're telegraphing all the way. Watch this, John. Watch this. I'm just like, all right, all right, motherfucker. Guys, he hasn't done karate in ten years. Get ready for this. So, John, me being skilled, all right, and kind of. Oh, no, no, I want to see. Hold on, I want to see you execute the kick properly. Oh, that, look now, at here's that, the folks. Look at that shit. Wow. And I'm not sure if anybody saw it. I promise at the end of the show, wow. I would use numchuck at the end of the show. So I'm going to keep that promise. You have them? Get them, man. Let's see this shit. Get them? All right. So while Jesse's looking for the numchuck, so yes, we, there, there's this big debate about is it an illegal kick? Is it not? But Daniel wins the day. He wins the oh, tournament. And, oh, my God. Okay, well, now we need to – there you go. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Look at those transitions. Wow. Yeah. He crack himself. Jesse, you are impressive, sir. Oh, look at this. Man, I am never going to break into your apartment. <laughs> Holy shit, man. You can kick my ass. <laughs> so, as a judge – as a judge, I would have let it go. That's all I'm going to say because you know what? He was doing a lot of illegal shit, and in all honesty, Johnny should have been thrown out after two of the illegal. Yeah, so, oh, when he's going after his leg. But then, if you notice, like Johnny has a change of heart where he's like, eh, you know, that I now see that this isn't right. But 
Crease, man, he doesn't give a fuck. He's like, you get out there and do it. You win. You get out there, you win. So I, he's my oh, God, I'm just like, uh, I'm still catching my breath right now. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. I, I mean, we're, we're obviously not conditioned, but I so uh, the thing I like about Karate Kid 2 is that it starts right where the first one ends. We're out in the parking lot mm -hmm. and Kreese breaks Johnny's trophy and basically kicks him out of Cobra Kai and then tries to kill him. And then Miyagi steps in and thoroughly embarrasses Kreese in front of everybody. Yeah. So now Kreese is a broken man. He's traveling the streets with nothing. He's a hobo. His dojo has <laughs> been shut down. He's all disheveled. His hair is all fucked up. Just, you know, just on the street. You know, fuck you, Kreese. You're out of here. And then we go to Okinawa because we get some bad news, right? We get some bad news. Mr. Miyagi's dad is dying. And here's where we get more of the backstory, right? Miyagi has his own feud over in Okinawa. And uh, the guy he's feuding has his own apprentice, uh, Chosen, that he's training up. And then so Daniel and Chosen get into a rift because they're going after the same girl. And then they have a fight at the end, but it's a real fight. It's a it's real, a to the death. real fight. And the... While Karate Kid Part 2 is a little slower, in my opinion, um, the the characters and story that it flushes out, in my opinion, is actually better than the first movie. But the first mm. movie as a whole is better, if that makes sense of what I'm saying. No, no, but, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, the, second, Miyagi, movie, the oh. second movie was good to see that adventure and that growth yeah. and the, the new technique, you know, the, the drum. Like, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I really enjoyed what they did with the characters. I mean, look. And I always tell people with sequels and stuff like that, understand that if you love the characters, you'll enjoy the movie. You'll enjoy Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I don't mark. Yeah. It was a phenomenal movie. Uh, they, they, they obviously Danny kicks the attempted murderer's ass. <laughs> well, but that's, that's where the real gem of part two is. In my opinion, is that when Miyagi comes up to Daniel and he's like talking to his ear, he's like, Daniel, this isn't the tournament. This is for real. And it's Daniel's so like, Daniel doesn't even skip a beat. He's like, got it. Like, <laughs> got it. no problem. Got it. And I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. And yeah. he kicks Chosen's ass, dude. Just beats him. And then the little Hong Kong thing at the end, which I like, they carry that little nose thing on because it shows that, you know, Miyagi-Do isn't about to the death. Miyagi-Do is about defense and mm -hmm you know, ensuring that you, you come out as victorious, but it's not about the killing blow. You know, this isn't Bolo Yang in, you know, blood sport where he's killing the dudes just because he can. You well, know, was that not about I that. I was uh, no dude, get your movie straight. That's blood sport with Chong Lee. Come on, man. Get okay, it right. My bad. Sorry. Okay. It's been a while. All right. So anyways, so let's fast forward. So well, no. Now we got to do part three. So we're gonna, doing. oh, okay, okay. It's my favorite one. Don't take this away from me, okay? My okay. Favorite you, character. So you talk to us now about part three. All right. This this uh this World War II veteran from Okinawa and his sent his uh his uh ward. They come back it's to America. They, beautiful, beautiful. They, they open up a bonsai tree shop, right? Oh yeah, they do. But John Kreese. He's not going to lie down. He, he goes to back. his buddy, Mr. Terry fucking Silver, uh, who is the slimiest guy with an MBA on this with side his, of the his greasy ponytail <laughs> and his, like, 80s sweatshirt with, like, the elastic on the waist that's, like, all bunched up around his waistline. Dude, I love it, man. And yeah, I, I really like that. Like, the Coke Coke dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, then, and he always had those oh. weird lines that were just over the top. He'd be yeah. like, yes, we're going to make him see him bleed. <laughs> like, <laughs> but anyways, he he comes up with this whole Machiavellian plan to avenge Crease by pretending Crease has died. Uh, he right. sends, Where did that he, come from? He sends, he sends this bad boy of martial arts to torment Danny back into the tournament. He will – then – Terry's like, I'll coach you to fight him, but secretly he's working with him, and mm -hmm. and Crease is still alive, and it all comes out eventually where the bad boy Karate Kid dangles Danny off of a cliff by a rope and threatens him at tree point, and I said tree point because he was going to snap the bonsai tree in half, which he still does. 
He still does because he's an asshole. Um, but anyways, so eventually, you know, this causes a rift between Miyagi and Danny. But then when Danny finds out about the ruse, right, Terry creases alive. But we can't skip over something really important that happens. Important. Daniel gets so consumed with vengeance that he lost to that. I don't even remember that crazy dude's name that he lost to him, that he's willing to give up what Miyagi taught him about being calm, focus. It's about defense and being smart. He gives all that up to take the shortcut with Terry Silver to learn the Cobra Kai way. And at first, he is reluctant, but then he embraces it. And he gets to a point where now he's going to become essentially Johnny from the first one. And he pulls back at the right at that mm -hmm. moment where it's going to happen. He realizes what happened. He pulled back. But I think that's a missed opportunity in the film because Miyagi could have had a really good pep talk with him about what it's like to, to kind of fall to those, you know, those influences and, and let those shortcuts and those types of things uh, influence you. That would have been a great pep talk to have, but they kind of played it off and he just kind of left and went back like, hey, I'm sorry. Ah, it's all good. Now let's train again. So I feel like yeah. they had had that missed opportunity dad moment, but that pissed off Terry Silver, and then what happened? Oh. <laughs> I just love when he fights. It's just how much of a joke is. And then Miyagi comes in, throws Crease and the bad boy karate kid down, and then he fights Crease and not, gets, spills paint on him and oh. shit. And then they do the training. But yep. The one of the best parts is when the tournament happens. He's obviously telling the kid to play dirty and to, but not to the point where you get uh knocked out mm -hmm. so you can just fuck with Danny. But I just love what he's like, ha, ha. I love the way he screams in there. Ha, ha. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, just, I just wonder what the direction was. It's like the director's like, All right, I want you to sound like you're being dubbed in an old Japanese film, but you're not. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I got this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. But, and then, like, a crease just standing there in his, his Cobra Kai gi, just standing there like he always does, staring with that pissed-off look. And then Terry Silver's over there, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, dude, it's, just, it's amazing. It's absolutely he's, amazing. He's the weirdest villain ever. He, he is. He, he is. put his multi-million dollar company on hold, the one where the sole goal to the job is to dump slime in toxic waste in natural environments. He put that whole thing on hold – to fuck with a war veteran in his ward because his buddy lost a karate tournament. Like that, that's the movie. But it's I love funny. it. The funny thing is, is I always equated Terry Silver to the villain of Men at Work with Charlie Sheen and Emilio <laughs> Estevez because it was the same plot. It was about an evil corporate tycoon that was trying to get away with dumping toxic waste into the ocean. And I'm like, oh, shit, that could have been Terry Silver a couple Thank years you. ago. <laughs> I just love when he's signing the paper with his secretary. Jesus. Can't dump toxic waste anywhere without somebody <laughs> trying to sue you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, it was just but perfect. But now let's fast forward. So Danny. So that on. ends. So that ends, and then we get two spinoff Karate Kid movies. We get the next Karate Kid with uh, up and coming Hillary Swank, which wasn't bad. And Ooh, then okay. we and then we get the Will Smith buys the rights to it. And reboots it with his son and uh, Jackie Chan, which again, that's not a that's not bad. Jackie Chan's fantastic, but the only reason I saw the movie, you can't like it's it's like rebooting Back to the Future. You can, yeah. but you can't, you know, because it's never you're never going to be able to replicate what everybody loved about Karate Kid. But Karate Kid was also. It's also about the setting and the time. You can't make a movie in, you know, 2020 that had a lot of callbacks to the 80s, but yet you can because after neither one of those had the type of success and nostalgic cult following that the original Karate Kids had, we move into the gem that we were gifted a few years ago that out of the blue hit. And what was that, Jesse? What are we transitioning well, we're to? Cobra Kai and what and what I think and we can kind of go into our next segment because this is going to this is going to fit, you know, because why does it work? Why is it such a gem? You know, 
And it's because we took a character that was that was kind of a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to the back, it, the background character of one of the greatest movies of all time, and fleshed him out, made us care about him, and they gave us a, re, a beautiful redemption arc. Because at the end of the day, at one point, we we've all felt like we were the bully or the bad guy. Oh, situation. sure, absolutely. And we get to see him kind of realize the errors of his ways. Like he saw like how Miguel at the end of season one was becoming more like how he was yeah. in the first cry get and he was like, oh I don't like that. I gotta change this. And you see him actively trying to change. And it what it does is it pays homage to the original movies, doesn't copy it, doesn't bastardize it. And it, it, it allows us to and I think Kevin Smith says his best play with the toys that we got to play with when we were kids mm -hmm. and we go on new adventures with them. And that, and, and I think that's why it's such a successful reboot slash sequel series. Oh yeah. I, I totally agree with all that. And then on top of that is the creative writing to it. They oh, yeah. wrote it in a way to where you want to keep watching because you want, there's, there's several things happening, but you want to see are Johnny and Daniel ever going to make up because Hey, and they do this all the time. Oh, look, they made up. And then 10 minutes later, all oh, a lie broke them apart again. And, yeah. then, and then four episodes later, oh, 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 they're making up and oh, another lie broke them up again. You know, so and, it's just like constantly. And, and seeing them fight together in the, the beginning of the third season is tremendous because you yeah. can see the potential of a beautiful friendship. Yep. But they're just so, and here's the thing, they're not that different. You know what I mean? Because they kind of flip flopped, you know. Uh, he was Johnny was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, and um, and, and, Ralph, and, and and Danny wasn't. And they switched, you know. One's new money, and the other one's poor. Yeah. And it it's kind of interesting to see how much the same character they are, which kind of brings us into this uh, segment, which uh, which I want to talk about. I want to get us moving because we're running out of time. Will the alliance be smooth between Johnny and Daniel? Because the ending of season three. It, it shows that they need to join forces in order to take out Cobra Kai mm -hmm. because it was taken over by John Kreese. Now, how do you think this alliance work? Will it work? Will Miyagi Do splinter like the tree, like the bonsai tree did in Cry Kid Part Three? What I, will happen? I think ultimately it will work, and that's going to be because our our man Terry Silver is going to come back. I mean, <laughs> look, and the Kreese clearly picked up the phone and he called someone for a favor which in karate kid part three we knew that uh that meant that he was calling terry silver now that cannot be confirmed 100 confirm it uh however i did miss now i will say i love the vietnam flashbacks because they really Great. build how priest became that son of a bitch that he was and it was because of his co that he mm. then had to kill but he didn't because at the moment he was going to kill him, they were being liberated. And, and he then, was like, nope, you're still going in. And he <laughs> did it. And I'm like, there it is. There it is. There it is. I loved it. So that explained a lot about Crease, which was great because, you know, you're just like, how does a person become a son of a bitch like that? Like yeah. so hardcore, you know? And okay, the dude was in Nam, first of all. So that already fucked him up. Then he got on a special ops duty. That fucked him up. Then his CO was a son of a bitch. That fucked him up. Then he had to kill his CO in order to live. That fucked him up. But then he didn't because they were getting liberated. But he hated the guy so much he did it anyways. And so, and it also revealed awesome. why he can't care for people. Right. Because he cared about the guy in the, the with the ponytail who we were getting teased was uh, Terry, but wasn't Terry. But he because he tried to save him, that's why they got captured. So that moment changed his life forever. That's what caused him to be in that that prison. We, and so we in his head me. now, he's like, I'm never yep. putting my neck out for anybody to save yep. anybody. You know, that's why he could like say, like, he'll look at students like, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out. He has no loyalty. He has to be the, you have to be the strongest mm -hmm. and the best for him to give a shit. And, uh, well, and that makes him the son of a bitch. He does have loyalty to one person, and that's Terry Silver. So, yes. what happens when the two of them team up and that becomes fractured? Because I'm going to be honest, once Terry Silver Ooh. shows up, and I'm going to speak to that, I look. I'm going to call it now. Terry Silver's showing up. He may not show up in season four, but he's showing up. It, he's back. It, it can't not bring the man back. They brought everybody else back. So he's coming back. We know this. Well, okay, to a degree. Um, when they bring him back, 
it's going to be very clear that the only way to win is to join forces. Now, obviously, Daniel's going to try to lead. Johnny's going to try to lead. There's going to be a rift there. They're they're going to they're they're going to struggle. But I think now we're getting to a point in the series where we can kind of start normalizing things. And I think that Johnny and Daniel can kind of more consistently team up instead of constantly being rivals. Now we've done this for three seasons. Uh, so I think that now that they're teaming them up, now we can start to kind of build the two armies, right? Now we can build Miyagi Do, we can build Cobra Kai. We had some switcheroos going on for three seasons, kids jumping back and forth, but now we can kind of let all that dust su- d- dust settle and really start to build these two dojos and really build their rivalry. I want to see Johnny and Daniel working together. And I'll admit, I don't want to see as much of their conflict anymore because I feel like we got that. We They, they beat us over the head for three seasons with yeah. this. And that kind of leads into some criticism that I have of the show is that I'm a little exhausted now of the constant back and forth of people jumping sides, kids switching sides. Yeah. Aaron switching sides like Johnny and Daniel constantly going back and forth and Daniel's wife getting all pissed off then going to crease and then she slapped him and then now the police won't do anything about it because they have a restraining order against her I'm like that's total bullshit um so it's like we, we've just done this juggling act of conflict and switching sides I'm ready for it to level off and really start establishing some roots now in this rivalry that they're going to come together because they have to come together in order to defeat Cobra Kai because Cobra Kai is not going to let up. And in fact, they're going to keep it moving forward once Terry Silver eventually shows up. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But I did like all of that conflict with he and Johnny and the times where they would kind of make up like i mentioned earlier and then something stupid that the viewer be like no would happen and they would break them up again like i was good with all that but but i'm ready to move on from that and i'm ready to to add stability now to the back half of the series because i think they said they signed it for total six seasons now so we're only halfway done so the first half we did all this universe building got all everybody established got all the pieces in the right spot now let's take the second half of the series and really get into some shit you know what i mean but in order to do that we gotta normalize and level some stuff up. we cannot keep doing all this jumping back and no, forth yeah. because it's, it's just going to be too distracting and whatnot so i want them to kind of focus on some things and 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 really push it forward um what did you think about the episode where he went back to okinawa and uh chosen was like totally different guy completely changed right i think I think what was great about that is that they could sh- they show redemption and they show uh, common ground and they and yeah. and, they, and, and resolved issues with that whole it, it, because here's the thing, uh, Danny's life it, it's it's out of control and and one of the interesting things is the way Karate Kid Part Two begins his life is kind of out of control you know Ali fucking cheated on him allegedly you know uh, he he doesn't he's just he kind of doesn't know what he's doing in his life you know. Because uh, I think it was his senior year or something like that. I can't remember what, yeah. what, what they, they kind of do a little bit of a time jump. But point is, it's like they go there and there's kind of a balance that's restored. And I think that was interesting. They go back to Okinawa with him because he wanted that balance to be restored. And he and he is leaderless. You know, he kind of he got to the point where, OK, I got no one to look up to for wisdom and all that stuff. I mean, Danny's broken that way. So I think having chosen as kind of almost like, as he said, uh, uh, a Miyagi-Do cousin uh, gave him a sense of happiness that he wasn't alone anymore. And I think it was a great addition to it. And also that no uh, good deed goes uh, unawarded because the girl that he saved during the hurricane saved his company. So that's kind of a a nice little little cherry on the top. but. But also, it it showed him. I think that's going to help the growth with him and Johnny. You know that while yes. that, yeah, I think that's going to help, mm-hmm. and it's going to help because he saw how well he he worked with Chosen, how he became a better martial artist. And I think he's going to yearn to be better with Johnny. Totally Even, agree. Yeah. So, and I th- I think they used, and that's why I'm confident that at some point 
we're going to be done with the, the, the Johnny feud and Daniel feud because they showed that Daniel's able to bury the hatchet with other rivals that he's had. And then on top of that, Chosen revealed that, hey, Miyagi-Do has its hands and the roots are much bigger than you realize. There were more yes. people that were involved with this. It goes back many, many generations. And there's a whole side of Miyagi-Do that you were never taught. And it's I liked and I didn't like that. I like it because it's mystery. It's revealing more of the mystery of Mr. Miyagi and Miyagi-Do and all of this. I liked that. I liked that there were scrolls of techniques no one had yeah. seen before. And Daniel had to earn one of those. It wasn't a, he tried to take it and chose him. was like, oh, no, 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 put that shit back. Yeah. And he earned it. And when he earned it, it was so much more of, of a, a accomplishment and a reward that he earned the right to hold that scroll and then chosen taught him the paralyzing move. And then Daniel turns around and does a decrease. And the look on his face is just like, how did you do this to me? It's like, yeah, motherfucker, you take that, you know, <laughs> but I, I really, really like that. I, I think that episode was probably the most important episode of season three because it built so much on the mythos and the backstory and kind of the universe and everything. I thought that was great. Um, one of the other little callbacks that I liked, I think it was the first episode where they were at the parent teacher conference after the big rumble that happened in high school and the LaRussos get up and they start talking and Daniel, I'm paraphrasing, but Daniel says something to the extent of, you know, my name's Daniel LaRusso. And, you know, I went to school here 35 years ago. I won that tournament. And then out of the blue, out of the blue, you hear some jack off and the audience go, Hey, I heard you were the bully. I was like, that is perfect. They, they just put that little Easter egg, right? And just threw it in there. Many people probably missed that. I laughed my I ass laughed. off when I heard that. I was like, that is what I'm talking about. That's why this show is so much fun. It's little things like that that they throw in there that just make you smile and make you have fun with it. So uh, that was something that I really liked. They don't take the show seriously, which is, I think, needed. I mean, when you look at those 80s movies, they didn't take them ser themselves what? seriously. What? Cat Jack wow. didn't take itself seriously. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cops, Goonie, all that stuff. They were just fun-ass movies. And that's what we need nowadays more than ever is a fun-ass movie, a fun-ass TV show. But, but Dude, uh, let me think about this real quick. Talking about suspending disbelief, right, and what's actually realistic and not – what town do you know that's going to tolerate a karate dojo with a psychotic sensei basically creating bullies that are going around terrorizing the city and people breaking all types of misdemeanor and juvenile laws left and right with no accountability whatsoever yeah. and then let them start feuding against you like that that's the thing is like it's just so crazy that you think about that you're like man would that happen in dublin ohio hell no that <laughs> wouldn't happen in dublin ohio you know what i mean so that's part of the fun too is you're just like what the hell like this would never ever happen in the real world and that's what's great that's your escapism it's yes. close enough to where you're like i accept all of this but you still understand that this is a hundred percent fiction would never happen this way no. but i can turn my brain off for 20 minutes 25 however long each episode is and just have fun with this story about these characters I loved as a kid that they naturally evolved through time. And now not only they have issues, but their kids have issues. Ghosts from the past come back out. People learn new stuff. Information is revealed. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's that carrot. Cobra Kai does a great job of dangling that carrot in front of you and making you want to watch the next episode. When I finished season three, I didn't realize how fast I went through it. I woke up super early one morning because I couldn't sleep. And I was only like four episodes in, slammed the whole rest of the series in like four hours. Because, you know, they're yeah, only like six episodes. And when the, the third uh, episode ended, when he made the, when Kreese made the phone call, I was like, oh shit, it's over. I'm like, come on. So now how long, they, they haven't even announced when season four is coming out. They haven't even shot it yet. So it's just like, oh, great. Now it's like Mandalorian. We've got to wait a whole fucking calendar year now to see the next season. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the thing. I remember when it was, I watched it on YouTube Red. So a lot of people, when this went to Netflix, everybody bitched about 
waiting six months. I had to wait a year. So I was like, fuck everybody. Yeah. I had to I had to sit on my hands with Miguel for over a year to see if he was going to walk again. You know, so and, and but the, and like I said, I, Miguel is such an interesting story because he's Danny and he's John at yep. the same time. And I like that moment where he talks with Danny and he learns a little bit about Miyagi Do. And I think seeing the two come together is going to be such a good thing. See Cobra Kai Miyagi because Cobra Kai, while it's a it's a school, it's also a martial arts. And Johnny is trying to save it. Johnny's mm-hmm. been trying to save. Miyagi Do or uh, Cobra Kai for a very long time, and it's just Crease ruined it because oh, it, yeah. it goes back to that lesson that um, Miyagi said in the first movie: there is no bad student, just bad teacher. Yep. That's what he said, and that's yep. what it is this entire time. Because think about it: I mean, you saw Cobra Kai didn't make a lot of these kids villains. It was the it was Crease that made them villains. Yes, absolutely, kidding. absolutely. Yeah, and, um, and yeah. Oh, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but, but like I said, I, I the suspension of disbelief is awesome because like can you imagine like 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 gang warfare like the, 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 like everybody gang... having a big karate rumble in the middle of high school like are you serious what <laughs> or, or an abandoned paint, paintball factory or yeah, whatever yeah. Shit. You, like break his arm or the mall <laughs> could, could you imagine being at like Polaris Mall and all of a sudden like twenty high school kids just <laughs> erupt in a massive like karate rumble and you're just like what is happening right now <laughs> what in the fuck is that yeah right. or 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 they they're having a little christmas party and all of a sudden they just attack the house <laughs> like, so i will say that that there are a couple of things that do bother me is when they take the fights just that extra just that little, yeah so the fight at the school was that extra too far for me. I thought it went on too long. There were too many people involved. And I'm sorry, teachers would have tried to break that up. No teacher would be like, I don't know, karate. I'm not breaking that up. And, oh, by the way, it's 2020 when, when this was filmed. There would at least be two to three resource officers at that school. It was in California. There's no way that those school resource officers, which are uniformed police officers would have just stood by and been like, eh, let them fight. We're not getting involved. No <laughs> way. No way. Um, but that also brings up a little lopsided thing that happened for me is I don't understand why Tori and Robbie are the ones that ended up getting juvenile convictions for the fight when so many other people were involved and then they go run away and have to go to juvie, but then everybody else is totally fine. They get like detention or some shit. And I'm just like, this is weird on why they chose to break those two off, but then not do anything with anybody else. It was, it was very strange. if you gotta look at it like this, uh, it, it it basically every every crime needs a face, all right. And it was easy to make those two the face for two reasons. Number one, Tori was on the announcements, instigate. She pretty much started the fight, which was crazy. I mean? No school would ever let a kid not only get that far into the office, but also get on the PA system exactly. without having that shut down. Like, and then, on, number, and then number two, it was Robbie's kick that was heard around the world I that mean, made him the face of that. It was, but in, in my opinion, while they were fighting and they're both responsible, it's oh, clear yeah. that he did not mean to do it. It, it, it was it was a accident, but it wasn't an accident because they were choosing to fight. But you you know, he didn't say, hmm, I think I'm gonna ninja kick Miguel off of this and kill him. <laughs> Like that, that's not what happened. You know well, what you I gotta mean? look at it like this. Some crimes they don't have culpability attached. There's a zero tolerance idea to the oh, crime. I, I totally, I totally get that. And I I thought it was weird how Robbie ran and the whole Robbie character annoys me because it's like, oh, I'm gonna be with my dad. No, I'm gonna be with my dad's rival. No, I'm gonna be with Crease. No, I'm gonna go back to my it's like Jesus Christ, kid. You grew Please. up on the goddamn streets with a drunk for a mother. I know you're stronger than this. Come on, man. Yeah, he kinda his character got wimpy in the second season for me. He got very wimpy. Like before he felt like a character that kind of could take care of himself and all that stuff. But yeah. then he was like 
I'm just trying to find a dad. Right. <laughs> I just want a dad. That's all I want. I want a dad. And I'm like, just shut up. Yeah, dude, it's going to be Terry Silver. Terry Silver is going to show up with adoption papers like you're mine now. Like like in Hook when he tried to steal Peter Pan's kid from him. It'll be like that. It'll be like Terry Silver. He'll show up with the little chain and the sweater and the ponytail and everything, dude. <laughs> He's gonna dress. He's gonna get Robbie to have a ponytail because yeah. Robbie has the hair. It's yes, like, that's what I'm talking bleed about. Today. Bleed. Absolutely. <laughs> so you know the the Robbie character has always kind of annoyed me um, because he and Johnny, while they don't have a relationship, they still don't have any on screen chemistry, and I get why they're doing that because they're just trying to say, hey, they don't have a relationship, so why would they have chemistry? But I think in acting, you still need to have a degree of chemistry between the actors, and I would still like, I would like to see just a little bit more father and son out of them than what we're getting. Um, but maybe we'll build to that. We've still got a whole half of a series left, so yeah, maybe we'll build to that. And the thing is, I, it doesn't bother me. They don't have uh, chemistry because I, I appreciate what they're doing with that. Because, I mean, and that's that's a technique that uh, director and casting directors have used for a very long time. Um, one of the grand examples is Animal House. One of the things they did, everybody in Delta House was not allowed to hang out with anybody from the press. Yeah, media. They weren't allowed. They, were, they slept in different quarters, ate different places. They wanted those people to be total strangers to each other so yeah. that there was this weird Amos. Or um, what was it? Um, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Everybody had to go to boot camp. Every actor had to go to boot camp except Matt Damon, so that everybody kind of had a little bit of resentfulness towards this character, since he was the character they were saving to get him to right, go home. Right. So, yeah, I, got, I agree with that. Yeah, but but then still, I mean, well, I let's see. You said it best. Let's see the second half. Let's see the second yeah. half of the show. Yeah. The one thing now. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with this, uh, specifically with the show, is uh, you know, we, they do a great job with the nostalgia. They do a great oh, job yeah. with the characters that we fell oh, in love yeah. with. Yeah, but now with the characters that are present, like the kids, what do you think? How do you think they're balancing the kids' story with the adult story? And and do you feel that sometimes the kid a little bit like there's a whole series? Because there was times, and I, don't get me wrong, I love the show, but sometimes I'm like, all right, I'm going to fuck. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I don't care that you're getting anxiety attacks. I'm sorry. LaRusso, daughter, I'm sorry. I, I feel for you. I get panic attacks sometimes. But it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know what to tell she, you. She got she got sliced up with with studded brass knuckles. It fucked her, man. And I mean, yeah. think about it. If that happened to you, like, you'd get fucked too, man. Your head would arm, be jacked up. Arm, I got, I had my shoulder separated in a fight. Okay, okay, that's a little bit different than somebody assaulting you with a weapon that tried to kill you with it. <laughs> Still, okay, okay, but anyways. Remember, yeah. these are kids. They're like 17. They're not like 40-year-olds, okay? They, they, I was, I was 17. <laughs> Dude, I was 17 when it happened. Hey, you weren't in a movie, though. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. This is a movie. We have to build a rivalry. Um, All right. So I, I think they're balancing it well. I'm going to be honest. I care way more about Johnny and Daniel's story than Same I do. Same here. All the kids. way. All like, the way. I, I, like, there's like three dozen kids in this movie, and I'm just kind of done with all of them. I, I mean that half joking, of course. But like I said earlier when we were talking, I'm a little bit done with all the flip-flopping side choosing this and that. Like, and I'm glad they brought Hawk over. I'm glad he realized finally with what's a kid, Dimitri, I think is the name. And there's yeah. some fucking kids. I don't remember all their names. <laughs> it was class. We had the big, drew the big dick. And then the girl was like, I like your big dick. And I'm like, that is awesome. That is hilarious. That was a good moment. That was a good was. moment. And that's it's the thing about the show. The it has evolving the kid. It's taking a lot of the quote unquote nerdy kids and like making them grow and and become something other than what they were and i i do enjoy that but all that flip-flopping just got really distracting so like i said i i hope we're leveling that off i do care about robbie's story because obviously i want him reunited with his father but again this would never happen in real life jesse i mean obviously we like we we both come from broken homes right so yeah. i mean come on man in what reality would you be reintroduced to your dad and then be like, fuck you. I'm going to team up with your rival just to piss you off. And then 
Oh, but wait, now I'm going to come back to you. But never mind. I'm going to go back to your rival. Oh, wait, now you both turned your back on me. So I'm going to now go with the one guy that's against both you and your rival because I hate you all. Dude, that does not happen in real life. Like, that's no. insane the way they're doing this. Like, even if you don't have a relationship with your father or whatever, there's no way. You're like, it's like, it's like, this is like the Warriors. You're not like jumping over the rival <laughs> gangs. Like, oh, now we're going to kill my dad gang like you know what i mean it's it's, yeah it's like i like his character because i want to see where he goes i love miguel's character because i finally feel like miguel was always a good guy only care about his character but johnny johnny was still damaged and johnny didn't evolve yet and so he started doing to miguel what was done to him by crease but when they both finally realized it was wrong they started to pull back from that all the drama happened, got pulled back in, pulled back out. Now they're with Miyagi Do. I'm like, okay. This is Godfather Part Three. It like, is. I tried and to get out and they pulled me back in. It straight is Godfather Three, man. Uh so you know, now they're over here. So I, I'm I'm good with that. I but I like Miguel the best. I, I think he, he, he the kid, it's like you said, it's a combination of both characters. Yes. And I think that's great because I do also agree that Johnny is kind of the main lead character of this and it's his redemption story, but it's also, you know, Robbie's redemption. It's Miguel's redemption. It's Daniel's Mm -hmm. redemption. It's everybody's redemption. It's Crease's redemption. The fucker's been gone for 30 years, living like a hobo comes back straight up, steals the dojo. And it's like, I'm back (laughs) right now, bitch. And then now like a cigar back. and everything. Yeah, <laughs> man. So he's been, and then Terry Silver is going to roll up gold chain and all, and then he's going to be like, "Nope, now it's mine." Crease, you're second in command. I'm taking over this shit. You know, <laughs> so it's just like, I, it, it, there's a, there's always a pissing contest. There's always a dick measuring contest. There's always a a power struggle, and that's what keeps us going through. But um, just to kind of bring it back home, you know, complaints are complaints, obviously, because nothing is perfect, but. That doesn't mean that we don't enjoy the show. I oh, love yeah, the no. show. I've been. I looked forward to season three so much, and I really enjoyed watching it. And I'm actually going to go back and watch all three seasons again. I'm um, going to see if my daughter is into it. She turns ten this year, so by her age, I was uh, I was watching all three Karate Kid movies. So I'm trying to. See, I would try to see if I can get her into it. I tried to get her to watch the Karate Kid movies. She wanted absolutely nothing to do with those in any way, shape, or form. So Cobra Kai is my last, my last itch. I think there's more action in there, so I might be able to. Yeah. You know, hey Lucy, just wait a second. Watch this, you know. So we'll see. But even if she doesn't want to, I'm actually going to run through the season again here pretty soon because uh, now that I kind of. All the spoilers are there. I understand the story thing. Now I can go back and watch through again and see anything that I missed, pick up on some more, you know, details. I'm pretty sure there's some Terry Silver clues in there that we missed. Uh, And, you know, again, for everybody listening or watching later on YouTube, we're calling it now. Terry Silver is coming back. I don't care who you are, what you say, he's coming back, and it's going to be fucking glorious. You know what I want to happen? What I want to happen, here we go. This is what I want to happen. I want them to be at the tournament and whoever is the final. So it's probably going to be like Miguel versus Robbie again. But now Miguel's going to be Miyagi-Do and Robbie's going to be Cobra Kai. And here's what I want. Just before they're about to throw their first punches, the lights go out. And they, they come back on, and then a, a cloud of smoke kind of appears <laughs> at the entrance. And Terry Silver just kind of starts walking in. Maybe there's some, like, background music, like it's a WWF intro. And he just, like, kind of slowly comes out. There you go. Rumble in the jungle, man. Welcome to the jungle, man. So he comes out and just kind of comes in crease, just looks at him, gives him a nod. Terry Silver just kind of gives him the nod. And we fade to black. So I, I would want love to take one detail. One detail. Okay, go ahead, I don't go know ahead. if Miguel will be in Miyagi Do. It could be Eagle Fang. 
All right, it could be Dude, Eagle Pass. Not keeping that name, and I love how I love how the kids keep checking him. Like, Dude, yeah. that, that's like totally like not real, right? And he's like, I don't Eagle care. Pass, not cool. <laughs> he's like, it's not a cool. Who cares? Kids like, yeah, but Eagles on my face. Like, let it go. Remove it. <laughs> I want that shirt so badly. I thought that was the funniest thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. I thought it was so cool at one point. I didn't even think about the fangs. <laughs> I Dude, like, I, I would totally rock an Eagle Fang shirt. I'm sure they make them. I'm sure, oh, yeah, I'm sure Red Bubble or someone's already started making them, got a license for it. Uh, yeah. Now that you brought that up, I am going to look for that. And I am going to look for the uh, Miyagi Do headband because, you know, I wear bandanas a lot, and, but I don't actually have one of those. So I, I kind of want to buy one of those and uh, mm-hmm. wear that around too. Uh, yeah. But that's what I'm really looking forward to the most is just the fun. When I watch this show, I just have fun, and I don't want to stop watching it. Me neither. It's fun. It's a fun show about characters I liked that I was a kid that they naturally grew up and evolved. And yeah. not enough – that doesn't happen enough with our 20 to 30-year later sequels. You know, take Dumb and Dumber. It was not the same. It was not the same at all. It just did not work at all, period. Ghostbusters, even though that was a total reboot, just didn't work, right? I am confident Top Gun is going to work, but there's a chance it won't work. You know, yeah. uh, Tron Legacy, in my opinion, really worked, but there was a risk that it wouldn't work. You know, oh, yeah. you, you always run that risk when you do something like this. And the risk is worth the reward because I don't know a single person that's like, oh, yeah, I hate Cobra Kai. I, no, I, I, put, I don't know anybody that's like, I hate that show. I put it like this. If there's a story worth telling, you will go back to the well and it will be excellent. I look at it like this. Breaking Bad probably had the best finale ever of all times. I still so have when, not watched that show. I will fully no, admit it here to the world. I have not watched Breaking watch Bad it. yet. I, I watched it. But when I they know. said they were going to do El Camino, everybody was like, why? You, you, you went out on top and then somehow he went on topper. Like he went... It was perfect. It was like the perfect encore of the show. Mm. And it was like, fuck, get this guy any award he wants for this movie. It was amazing. But the point is, it's like seeing where LaRusso is years later doesn't interest me. Seeing Johnny, this kind of pop culture, we always were trained to hate this character. Now we're yeah. we're going to like him now. It's his now story. I'm interested. Now I'm interested. You know, or but, but here's the thing with Ghostbusters. Did we want a reboot? Did 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 did, did, did the time demand a new story and a new reboot? No, no we just it didn't. Keep it going. We just wanted to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, it, 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 people, whatever you want, just just do the next story. Don't start it over. Yeah, that's why the the Ghostbusters video game did so good. The Ghostbusters oh yeah, that was video fun. game is the third movie script mixed in with a bunch of other things, and it was a good storyline and it was funny. I laugh. I, the first times in the game, I died because I was laughing. Yeah. Bill Murray says a one-liner, and I start cracking up, and then I get killed by a ghost because I lost focus. But yeah. that's the, the thing is, you got to have something that drives the story forward, or don't do it at all. Right. You need, like, like the guy who did Breaking Bad with El Camino, he said that he swore off from ever doing anything past that moment in Breaking Bad. And he said, the only reason why I went forward is because that story was lingering in my head for five years, and I couldn't get it out of my head. And, that, and then to me, five years, you thought about it, you incubated it, you grew it. You, and that's why I felt Cobra Kai was. It was very well thought out. Like, what? I love the little really details. Was. Why is why is Danny a car salesman? And the third one, he's like, I remember when Miyagi gave me my first car, and that was the greatest feeling in the world, and I want to do that for people and make yeah. them feel I'm like, wow. What a what a character growth right there. And I didn't know what this character Miyagi, still influencing his life. Yeah. So it's it's stuff like that 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 is great. It 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 drives the story forward naturally, rather than we Hollywood doesn't know what to do. They rehash the same story all over right. again and hope that you pay for it and not give a shit. You yeah. know this, this the people who did this series are fans. They are yes. total fans, and they're having fun with it, and yeah. that's why it works. And that's why Mandalorian works. That's yes. why all these work. Yes, it's an example of what happens when it works because you do it the correct way. You don't just do it and say, like, I I know that certain people really like that Evil Dead reboot, but 
I didn't because yeah. it, it got so far away from what Evil Dead was was the stuff that we loved about Evil Dead. But when you go back and watch Cobra Kai, it's like, oh my God, like no, no one had an agenda here. No one wanted to change anything. They literally said, let's take these characters and fast forward them 35 years into life and let's see where they're at, what they're doing. Now let's create this big dramatic web of characters, bring everybody back, whether they're main characters, secondaries, tertiaries, cameos, and let's bring them in. Yeah. And let's make this about Johnny because Daniel was in all three movies. Mr. Miyagi was in all three movies, but Johnny was only in one movie. And it was just kind of like we dropped Two, it. technically. Well, Two, technically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I gotta, like, I gotta be that. I gotta be that guy. All right. It was kind of like we dropped them. And now let's pick it back up. And I love that, that the very first scene when he was kicking those kids' asses when they were picking on Miguel, every time he went to do a kick, he was like, oh, it hurts. And like anytime he did, because he's like hadn't stretched in years, you know, he was yep. rusty. So I, I just, I love that because it was, I was watching Johnny as an adult and I'm like, okay, here he is, you know? So let's see what how Johnny's going to clean up his life. He's a drunk. He's an odd job guy. Let's let's see what's going to happen. And they've done a great job evolving him and cleaning him up and getting him on the path of redemption. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in season four. Oh, I'm also going to throw out another call out because we're almost out of time. By the end of this series, Johnny will be on staff at LaRusso Motors. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I like the on staff. I'm not going to say what position he's going to have, but <laughs> he will be on staff. I I like where that I I like that. And here's my prediction. My prediction: somehow Terry Silver is going to jail. <laughs> no, they can't put him in jail, man. They're going to kill him. Like they have to. Kill him. <laughs> him and Crease are going to die in a car accident or something. Like they can't put these guys in jail, man. <laughs> that's true that's true there's no cell that can hold the mighty terry silver he would Damn right at those bar doors wide open and walk out of that jail cell just like chuck norris would that's how kick-ass terry silver is i agree i'll i have to agree with that before we head out uh, a couple things real quick if you can't if you if you're just joining us now you want to watch the whole episode We'll be on YouTube tomorrow. So check it out. It'll be the whole episode will be on there if you enjoy. And while you're on our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Come on, support us. We love we love doing this. And we love reaching as many people as we can. So help us reach some more people. And sharing is caring. And here's another fun little sharing is caring that I want to do. For next week's episode, I want to just tease it real quickly. Booyah, it's happening. We're talking <laughs> Mandalorian. We're talking Mandalorian. Oh my god. This might be like it it's it's dude, this has it this has nothing to do with me. Putting yourself with that face as Grogu was just like genius, man. <laughs> Especially with the ears. That's so fantastic, man. That's hilarious. So yeah. So everybody bring your comments, bring your theories, bring your predictions for Mandalorian because we're gonna have a good time next Wednesday oh, yeah. at seven o'clock. There's we're gonna, gonna be, be Mandalorian. a lot of of I wonder if this will happen. I wonder if this will happen because nobody has any fucking idea what's gonna happen after the ending of the second season. It's like, uh, where are we going from here? Yeah, so, and, and here's happens. the thing, they could literally say we're done. And it would be okay because I'm like, I was a good uh, ending. Well, it wouldn't be okay because people want to see more. But yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, oh, but you know what I mean. You, yeah, you know what I mean. They concluded the story that they set out to tell. So. Yeah. Basically, I want to make sure Grogu graduates from the Skywalker Temple before fucking Ben Solo shows up. Because. Oh, dude, dude, don't you know that Grogu is the one that actually trains Snoke? What? Oh, sorry. We'll we'll save that for next week. We'll episode. save that for another time. But anyways, I want to thank everybody who joined us today. Jordan, Desiree, uh, she's commenting. I'm sorry I didn't get your comment. Goonies, where were their parents in the 80s movies? Yes. Exactly. Very exactly. true. There aren't any parents in any 80s movie. They're nowhere. Forget them. Forget them. All right. And then I will also want to thank a few. Uh, I want to thank a uh, big shout out to Vance, the producer. 
He produces the goods. He helps us get on here. I want to thank Max Roland for all graphics. And again, like and subscribe us on YouTube. And thank you so much for everybody joining in. And until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the Grown Ups table. Thank you and have an awesome night, everybody. Cobra Kai never dies. Never oh, yeah. dies.